So some screening tools. So we're, first of all, we're going to talk about distress screening. And that's the ESAS, the Edmonton Symptom Assessment Scale. So the distress screening, or the Edmonton Symptom Assessment Scale, or ESAS, talks all about symptoms and uh, assesses symptoms. And it encourages a reproducible, structured assessment in palliative care. So it forces the person who's doing the assessment to, uh, to look at um, different characteristics of uh, diff different symptoms and to rate those. And it's reproducible. Identifies key symptoms for that person, for instance, dyspnea, fatigue, sleep, cough, pain. And it needs to be done regularly for symptom intensity and associated distress. Um, and it, responses, it measures the response to treatment. So if you do an ESAS on one day and you find out that their pain is really bad and then you maybe increase their doses or frequency of medication, do an ESAS the next day and you can mark, see what's happened. And it, and it avoids this um, how are they fine sort of response. As you can see, there's several um, levels there. No, it measures pain, tiredness, drowsiness, nausea, lack of appetite, shortness of breath, de uh, depression, anxiety, well-being, and then there's room for other at the bottom. And what we're trying to do is that all palliative care patients, on acute care at least, should have, at least for the first three days of their admission, a daily ESAS done. Um, a very effective way of doing this is to mark it with a Sharpie pen, so you get this sort of block graph um, appearance, um, so blocking out the numbers so you can immediately look at it very quickly and see where the problems are. Um, always in an ESAS, zero is great and 10 is bad. So um, some people talk about lack of appetite. Well, zero means no lack of appetite and 10 is terrible. Um, um, so zero is always the best one and 10 is the bad one. Um, Ideally, it should be filled out by the patient themselves. That's the number one thing. Um, if it can't be filled out by the patient themselves, it should be filled out ideally by the same caregiver every time. Ideally, it should be filled out, filled out at the same time every day because we all know we feel different at different times of the day. Um, and it really facilitates that communication between professionals and response to symptoms and helps you um, focus in on where the real problems are and it encourages a standardized palliative care assessment because if you've gone through that ESAS you've done a pretty good palliative care assessment at least for symptoms.